Hello, I'm Larry Wilson, and I'd like to welcome you to this segment in our study on the coming Antichrist. In our last segment, we were looking at Revelation 12 and the historical progression, the chronological progression through history of the work of, this, of the devil. I want to quickly move into chapter 13 of Revelation. And so these next uh, few verses of Revelation 12, I'm going to summarize them. I hope that you will read uh, Revelation 12 and 13 in their entirety. But I'm just trying to give you uh, some help for understanding as you try to wrestle with these verses in your own Bible. In chapter 12, verse 7, John says, And there was war in heaven. Let's go to the computer screen and see the Bible on the screen. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. This war took place on Resurrection Sunday. This war took place between Christ and Lucifer. After Jesus was resurrected on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, you remember, came to the tomb and attempted to, uh, to stay Jesus there for a moment. And he said, woman, don't detain me. Don't hold me back. I must get to my father. Jesus went to heaven Sunday morning, and there upon the presentation of his own blood for the redemption of man, he took the chair, he took the position at the table that Lucifer had once occupied. Maybe you didn't know that Lucifer had a chair. <laughs> You've heard, uh, you've heard the old expression, um, he lost his seat. Well, what happened is that when Lucifer led Adam and Eve to sin, God gave Lucifer the, a chair at the table of administration. And Lucifer represented earth. He was the prince of this earth. And uh, in the book of Job, in chapter 1, we find the, an instance, just one, I'm sure, of many instances where the devil attends these administrative, high-level administrative meetings, and his seat is at the table as the representative of earth. Well, on Sunday morning, upon resurrection, Jesus immediately went to heaven, and there he took the chair that belonged to Lucifer because now Lucifer had lost his place. Lucifer would be cast out of the government of God. Lucifer had no claim on this world because the world and all that's in it had been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, bought back. Lucifer had no claim. Lucifer had no position. Lucifer had no authority. Lucifer could not speak for earth any longer. And so there was war in heaven. I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but when two people are fighting over the same chair, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Michael is Christ. Michael is the archangel. Jesus is man. And Michael is an angel. And yet, it's all one and the same person. That's another story in itself. I've covered that in various uh, articles in the Daystar. It's on our website. Incidentally, I encourage you to, to, to go to our website at www.wake-up.org. And there you can get copies of our monthly Bible studies on a whole range of subjects and issues that might interest you. That's www.wake-up.org. So, there is war in heaven. Michael and his angels fight against Lucifer and his angels, but Lucifer and his angels, they lose their seat in heaven. And in fact, this is what the Bible says. Verse 8, But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place, their place in heaven. This happened on Resurrection Sunday morning. You know, I ought to take you to a text here in John chapter 12. 
You remember Jesus is in the temple. And uh, a voice spoke to Jesus. This is just uh, a couple of days before his crucifixion. And Jesus said, Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. And the crowd that was there heard it and said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Then Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. In other words, this is evidence of who I am. And I want you to look at verse 31 very carefully. Jesus said, now is the time for judgment on this world. A decision on this world. Now, the prince of this world will be driven out. Well, what is Jesus talking about? The prince of this world is the devil. He will be driven out of what? Out of where? Was he driven out of the world? No, the devil's very much alive here. We see the evidence all around us. Jesus is talking about what is taking place in heaven. Now is the time for a decision on this world about this world. And Jesus raced to heaven resurrection morning to see that that decision was properly made as the representative of this world. The prince of this world will be driven out of his place at heaven's table. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. I bring this to you because a lot of people read Revelation 12 uh, 7 and 8 and 9, and they totally missed the point. The great dragon was hurled out, hurled down, Resurrection Sunday. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. He's already here leading the whole world astray, but he was hurled to the earth on Resurrection Sunday. And notice what happens. This is the next voice. Then I heard a voice in heaven say, Victory, victory! Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. Some people say this war in heaven that's being described here occurred before the world was created. That's not possible. For the accuser of our brothers, there were no brothers before the world was created. This is talking about you and me. The accuser of our brothers who accuses them before God day and night. See, he has a place at the table, just like we see in Job chapter 1. And the accuser has been hurled down. This happened in 30 A.D. 30, Resurrection Sunday, the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ were seen Resurrection Sunday for the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Boy, you know, it's such a neat thought to, to know that we have no accuser in heaven. Dear friends, we have no accuser in heaven. He has been hurled down to the earth. Notice what it says here in verse 11, speaking of the saints. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Oh, listen, friends, this is how we overcome the evil one. It is through the power, the blood of the Lamb. We can't do it in our own strength. But if we love the Lord more than we love life itself, He will give us the power to overcome this great adversary, the devil. Notice verse 12. Therefore rejoice. This is the victory song in heaven. Rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury. Well, he lost his seat. 
more ways than one. <laughs> he is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Listen, when the devil whips up on you and reminds you of your terrible, sinful past, you turn and you squarely face the devil and you remind him of his future. And he will run. The devil knows that God is going to destroy him. He knows that his time is short. He knows the truth. And he is aggressively doing everything he can to destroy everyone with him. He's not going to be saved. He can't be saved. And he's going to do his very best to make sure that nobody else can be saved. So when he reminds you of your past, your sinful, rotten past, you remind him of his future and watch him run for cover. Okay, let's go back to the Bible and watch verse 13. This will put the nail on it for sure. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. Now, this verse is very simple if you will follow its logic. It will eliminate the entire question of when did this war in heaven occur. If you will just use two ounces of intelligence, you can figure this one out. Watch this. The Bible says, when the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. When did she give birth? She gave birth, let's say, in 4 B.C. So when the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman after 4 B.C. In other words... The dragon sees himself cast into the earth after 4 B.C. because the woman had already given birth to the male child. He attempts to destroy the male child the moment it's born, but he fails. Then there's war in heaven, and he fails. And so what does he, got to, what does he have left? To, where does he have to vent his fury? It's against the woman, the people of God. So the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle that she might fly to the the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time out of the serpent's reach. This is a description of the Dark Ages, the 1260 days, 1260 years, where the people of God are sustained in the wilderness of persecution, where the woman is sustained and taken care of out of the serpent's reach, or the serpent would have totally destroyed her. Notice verse 15. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and to sweep her away with the torrent. Throughout the Old Testament, I have shown in this seminar series many times how that a flood is used to describe warfare, how that a flood is used to describe utter and total destruction, how that a flood is utterly the flooding of the river Euphrates. The flooding uh, is, is overwhelmingly destructive. And the, and the devil spewed from his mouth water like a flood, a river, to overtake the woman and to sweep her away with the torrent. But... The earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that this dragon had spewed out of his mouth. This, verse 16, is an oblique reference to the United States of America. The 1,260 days, the time, times, and dividing of time, where the woman was cared for, or half a time, that time period is... 538 to 1798. In 1798, the power of the church was broken by Napoleon as generals Berthier and Waller took the Pope into exile and the power and the authority of the Roman Catholic Church was finally broken. This is the French Revolution. 
The year is 1798, February 1798. As the power of the church is being broken in 1798, God is raising up a chunk, a new world, a new continent, a new land, to which those who have been religiously persecuted may flee. It is called the United States of America. The earth helped the church. The earth helped the woman, the people of God, by providing a new piece of real estate where the people of God could go and escape the destruction of the dragon. So God provided a way out for the woman at the end of the 1260 years. And the Declaration of Independence was signed in the United States in 1776. And 22 years later, the papal authority is brought down and the immigration to America and, the, and, the, and a country offering the freedom, religious freedom and religious liberty was opened up. And there has been no parallel like it in all of Earth's history, the United States of America. So the dragon has failed to kill the baby Jesus. The dragon has fil failed to keep his seat in heaven. The dragon has failed to destroy the woman. God protects her. And then God opens up a place for the woman to escape and even to flourish for a short season. So verse 17 brings us down to our current time. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman, and he went off, or went away, as it says in the King James Version, to make war against the remnant, the last of her offspring, those who keep God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. This is an important point. The dragon is enraged at the woman, and he's preparing to make war against her. The remnant of her offspring. Those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. These are the people of God. Those who obey God and those who hold to the testimony of Jesus. I'll have to do a segment on the testimony of Jesus there's a lot of confusion about what the testimony of Jesus is and is not. And I need to present from the scripture what the testimony of Jesus really is. But we'll go to that at another time. I've, I'm running out of time and I want to con conclude this most important point here. So, the dragon is preparing to make war on the remnant, the remnant of God's people. And I want to show you that this war is described down here in verse 7. Chapter 13, verse 7. Incidentally, this is not a new prophecy. We're still continuing on with the prophecy that began in Revelation 12, 7. Chronologically, we're following right down through the order. And in Revelation 12, 7, this beast that rises called Babylon will be given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. So the war that the Satan is anticipating is forthcoming, and this war is going to last for a total of 42 months, 1,260 days, literal days, literal months, because we're not under the operation of the Jubilee calendar. But I want you to go back here to verse 1. I know you're getting dizzy watching the Bible go by, but I want you to understand something. John saw a beast coming up out of the sea, and he had ten horns and seven heads. But this time he has ten crowns on his horns, and on each head is a blasphemous name. This beast is a puppet. And if I were going to put on a glove, the glove should have a place for each of my fingers, should it not? If you put on a mitten, it just has a mitten is just basically the basic form of the hand. But a glove has a place for each of your fingers. What I want you to understand is this. In the very near future, when the judgments of God are poured out upon this earth, 
there's going to be a violent reaction to the judgments of God. In every country and in every religion, there's going to be a complete revolution. This revolution, this crisis government that's going to form, will be formed just as the scripture here predicts. The religious leaders of each majority, uh, of the majority of each nation, will ask legislators to pass laws honoring and worshiping God. This is going to create a big problem because the religions of the world are all false. And what is, will be imposed upon the people of all the world, of all the nations of the world, will be false religion. See, that's what this is all set up. And this beast that has seven heads and ten horns in Revelation 13 is simply a glove into which Lucifer, the great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, will put his hand. Watch this. Watch this unfold. So this beast that comes up out of the sea has ten horns and seven heads, just like his father, the, the great red dragon. And this beast has some earthly properties that I don't have time to talk about right now. But I want you to notice verse um, 4. Men worshipped whom? The dragon. Because he had given authority to the beast and they also worshiped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? Now let's go back here to verse 3. Or uh, verse uh, uh, 2. I want to go to 2. The dragon gave this beast his power, his throne, and great authority. What I'm trying to tell you is that when the judgments of God begin, everyone is going to be scared to death at the wrath of God is so overwhelmingly severe, the wrath of God is so overwhelmingly large and encompassing, every nation on the earth will, ha will be experiencing the wrath of God, and the religious leaders will form a coalition rather quickly, and they will say to their respective uh, nations, make laws honoring God, sin less, so that we may appease Him with right doing. False religion will be quickly imposed upon every nation and in every nation and there's going to be a great hue and cry that rises from the imposition of these laws. It's the devil who gives Babylon its power, its throne, and great authority. Notice what the Bible says right there in black and white. Literally, the dragon gave the beast his power, his throne, and great authority. Now, I've talked about this beast, and I've talked about Babylon, and I've talked about these things many, many times in segments past. I want to move down to, the, to uh, Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 7 again, and let me pick up there. I've got just a few minutes, and I've got to get to 13, 11. So Babylon, this beast, is given power to make war against the saints. Well, we know why he does that. Because the dragon, who's within, hates the saints. And here's something that most Christians don't understand. He's going to have power to conquer them, and God is going to allow the devil to conquer the saints. Just like God delivered the saints over to the little horn power in Daniel 7 for a time, times, and half a time. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. The devil will see to it that Babylon has authority over every body, every where. And verse 8 says, All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. That is, all whose names have not been written in the book of life, belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. Okay. The point I want you to understand here is that when God's judgments begin and false religion is imposed by legislative decree upon the inhabitants of earth, people who have no faith in God will capitulate and because the penalties are severe and because disobedience comes with a great price, many people will capitulate and worship the beast. 
That's what the Bible says. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast except those whose names have been written in the book of life. Now, about two years into the great controversy, about two years into the great tribulation, the devil is going to be allowed to physically appear. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns, like the lamb, but he spoke like the dragon. The article A should be the article V. It's just a faulty translation. He had two horns. He has two powers. When Satan physically appears, he claims to be king of kings and lord of lords. He, one power, one horn is church, the other is state. And he, can, and he claims to be ruler of both. When Satan physically appears, notice he exercises all of the authority of the first beast on his behalf. And he made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. The head that had received the fatal wound is the Roman Catholic Church. When I mentioned Napoleon's uh, attack on the church in 1798, the Protestantism, Catholicism, uh, the seven heads of this beast are, are the seven religions of the world. And the seven religions of the world will be united in sort of a confusing way, and that's why this is called Babylon. And the ten horns represent the ten sectors to, into which the earth will be divided when Lucifer finally sets up his kingdom. Here in Revelation chapter 13, verse 13, notice that when Satan appears, he performs great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. This fire is proof of his divinity, and because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth, and he ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed." Well, I'm out of time. But dear friends, I want you to read or reread this little book. Get it out this weekend and sit down and read it. You need a free copy of this if you don't have one. Call us at 1-800-475-0876. I want you to have a free copy of this little book. What, the things that are about to take place on this earth have no parallel in times past. You need to understand God's Word. You need to understand the road map of Bible prophecy because the fulfillment is even at the door. May God bless you. We'll see you next time.